I have always found Gandhi incredibly inspiring. I was reading Gandhi's autobiography, and he goes into the fact that he, he bought a violin and tried to study violin for six months while he was living in London, and that blew my mind, and it got me thinking about how the decisions that we make define who we are, because what if Gandhi had decided, I really like this violin stuff, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really go for it. Who knows when India would have become independent, or how it would have become independent. In March 2023, composer and violinist William Harvey premiered his new concerto, The Seven Decisions of Gandhi, with the Princeton Symphony Orchestra. By September 2017, I had been invited to be guest concertmaster of the best orchestra in Africa, in Durban, South Africa. And during that time, I got to meet Ella Gandhi, Ella Gandhi is a prominent South African peace activist, politician, and the granddaughter of Mahatma Gandhi. I asked her, can you tell me more about how your grandfather thought he wanted to be a violinist? And so she talked about that. For me, it was a lovely experience to meet him and to listen to his ideas and about music itself. I think, uh, you know, musicians are generally very sensitive. And I asked her, would it be okay uh, if someone writes a violin concerto inspired by your grandfather's life? She gave permission, provided that I included in the piece two of his favorite hymns. These two bhajans, my grandfather loved them. So one is uh, Raghupati and the other is Vaishnava Janu. And the one is a chant, but it has a good meaning uh, because it also refers to all religions, the unity of all religions. But Vaishnava Jana say, talks about what is the quality of a good person. Sure, there's two very famous bhajans that I think all Indians know. Um, they were immortalized by Gandhiji's, uh, you know, affection for them. Raghupati Raja Ram Patita Pavana Sita Ram William has worked in Argentina, Mexico, and Afghanistan. There, he taught music for four years at the National Institute of Music in Kabul and immersed himself in the country's music. Afghan music is based on Indian ragas and rhythms. It was a transformative experience that has deeply affected his work. <laughs> Is someone who studied Indian classical music understands how uh, the systems work and for a piece that's designed as a beautiful collaboration between Indian classical and Western classical music. I became aware of these these wonderful biographies uh, by Ramachandra Guha, and so I thought, well, seven is kind of the magical number, you know, and I'll read through both books and pick exactly seven decisions that made Gandhi the global nonviolence icon beloved today. The first movement deals with Gandhi's decision at 18 to sail to England in defiance of his community elders. Another was when he sold his violin. Gandhi, when he was in London to study, thought he would be an English gentleman and studied violin and then decided, you know what, this isn't for me. So he did sell the violin. The third movement, uh, Phoenix, is about his decision in South Africa to build an ashram. He decided immediately, I'm giving up my beautiful house in Durban, in the city, 
and I'm going to go and live on a farm. And he approached his friends and asked them if they would like to join him in this experiment of communal living, of simple living, and of self-sufficiency. So in that movement, you hear uh, a Christian hymn, you hear a Hindu hymn, you hear an imitation of the Muslim call to prayer, an imitation of the Jewish shofar, and all blended together. Other movements depict his first call for civil disobedience in 1906, and later his decision to wear homespun cloth, leading to a boycott of English textiles. Thus began the Qadi, or homespun movement. The seventh movement is the Salt March. The Salt March is the most significant event in the life of Gandhiji. And the reason is because it was a tax on salt. And so he chose this particular issue to mobilize the people that let's protest against this and we will march and go to the seashore and make our own salt. And we do hear at the very end of the movement what appears to be a triumphant climax marred with a dissonant chord and then this sort of ethereal quiet ending that quotes from one of the hymns, uh, Ragupati Raghava Raja Ram, and then the violin ascends very slowly and quietly upward to represent his soul uh, after being assassinated. I constantly struggle to find my own sense of purpose and motivation in life, um, particularly in light of the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan on August 15th, 2021, because for 10 years before that, my proudest achievement and the highlight of my life was the four years that I spent teaching violin in Afghanistan. A, a, a life commitment and achievement that are very much in line with Gandhi's ideas about how nonviolence and truth and love always win out in the end. I would like to ask Gandhi, you know, his advice about Afghanistan. I'm not sure I have an answer. I just know that music is the language with which I search for that answer. <laughs> <laughs>